G'day everyone, Matt Elder of Family Bricks here, and in this video we'll show you how to mount and frame a drawing at home for about £10, like this one. We will go from a basic A4 illustration drawing and put it into an A3 frame, like this one, with the mount to really make it have a presence and be ready to be hung on a wall. This video is brought to you by McCatsum Holiday Homes in Margate and Broadstairs. Great for a week's holiday or a weekend escape, being just over an hour east of London, UK. Treat yourself to amazing sunsets, a Lego wall, or great food. Visit www.macatsim.com and mention this YouTube video and we'll look after you. So here's one that I prepared earlier which I put into the frame and just has a generic black mount and we're going to take this one and do something similar to it. In the description around the video I will have affiliate links so you can get most of this stuff pretty readily and for not much money. I also readily use these sorts of frames for my oil paintings as well. So it is something that I use pretty regularly. So we normally get this A3 frame, which comes in plastic wrap, and then also to, uh, this is a black mount, which I generally recommend using when you want to focus the eye in on things. And because the subject matter that we've got here is quite masculine in terms of an Iron Man, it works out well. But if you had something which was like flowers or something a bit lighter, then sometimes you might just want a white mount because then it will make it just feel like it's breathing a bit more. So if you got to the point where you can see with this one where you've got the black and there's a little bit of a white inset there, whereas if you did get the black by mistake and then think, oh, well, yeah, I want to use a white, you could kind of use the back and have it in like that and showing through, but you will see these little corners and things. So not ideal, but um, if you're just looking to do something quick and cheap and just get it framed, then that's another way of doing it. So the first thing you do is go through and if you haven't already, just whatever table surface you're going to be using, make sure it's clean because if it's got any dust or dirt, this is really going to pick up here. Um, and then flip it over so that when you're opening it, if you do happen to scour anything, it's going to be on the back side, not the front perspex or whatever it is. So with these, first of all, just check just to see if it's too badly beat up or anything. You might have to send it back. It seems okay. We'll flip it over and you're going to have a whole bunch of these little metal things holding the cardboard in there. So you usually just take a standard butter knife and just get in under there and lift them up. So be careful just when you're doing that and we'll just go around and do them all. Now the thing from here when you're taking it out, you basically want the surfaces to remain clean. So certainly when you're getting this out, you're going to then be placing it this side down. Because if you place the other side, that side down, then potentially you're introducing a whole bunch of dirt and things into it. Even sometimes it's got a little bit of dust on it. So just give it a, a quick little bit of a wipe down. You can feel just a little bit of grit and stuff coming off. And the same sort of thing. Usually you probably can't see it, but there is a bit of dirt and dust in there. So just take a just a lightly damp rag and just go over it. So we want to pick all that stuff up. There's nothing worse than going through all this trouble to do all this. And then once it's mounted and everything, you then notice that there's dirt and stuff underneath the glass, and the only way to get it is to come back in and get all that again. So just while that's kind of uh, letting itself dry. Coming and we'll take our actual image or document or whatever it is that you want to frame and we'll stick it actually on the mount so again just check the mount itself it's pretty clean nothing's all too beat up so place it down and then we'll place whatever the document is in this case this this artwork so now what you're going to find is there's going to be maybe one two or three mil overlap between the artwork and that so you just want to try to center it and it's just little tiny nudges unless it gets stuck in there like that in which case lift it up and do it again there's not much tolerance in it so you, it might be a little on the fiddly side that's why you get it mostly where you want it and then you're just slowly tapping it around and that's nice with using a a dark surface like this countertop because then it becomes really clear when you're looking through at it uh, where the paper and the overlap is there so you're not really guessing because you've got 
the black surface underneath it. So pretty close with that there. Then just to fix it down, can use, um, you want a low tack tape. Basically what that means is that once you put the tape down, if you leave it for a few years and then you decide later on you want to take it out or redo it or do something else, maybe put it in a nicer frame or what have you, then if you're using uh, like sticky tape or scotch tape or whatever, when you go to lift it up, it's going to peel and rip the paper. Whereas um, this is like a artist low tack tape. So uh, it will enable it to come off much easier or um, you can also use uh, this sort of painter's tape, what they call it, for when they're using it for cutting in edges and things. So yeah, they put that up on the wall, they paint over it, and then when they take it off, it gives a nice crisp line. So whatever you're around, I'm going to use the artist tape. And then just little corners. Now I'm going to try to keep it on the diagonal like that and do all four the same. You will if you really look for it when you flip it over, sort of just see a little bit of the difference there. Alternatively, you could also just run tape the whole length all the way around. But again, we're just looking at something that in the future, if I uh, want to go through and reuse either the drawing or the mount, it's easy enough to come off. And you're just looking for something to more or less just hold it there in place. So we've got that. So just lift that up. That's it there. So you just want to, you know, any little tiny bits of flex of whatever, get it off. Particularly on the black, it's really going to show up. And then we had our frame from earlier on. I can see there's just a few few little bits of fluff and stuff in there which I'm not happy about and want to get out. It's not really a deal breaker, it's just how OCD you might be with things. So we'll just leave that there for a minute or so to dry. So that's being left to dry. So now we'll just come along with our picture and we just need to remember which way is up. Uh, it won't be too much of an issue here because we can see through, but when we go to hang it, and things we just need to make sure we know what it is so pop that in there come back to our backing mount and again the reason that we want to know which way it's up is so you know where to put these because this is where it's going to hang off so for this one because it's going to be there we'll put this at the top so when you hang it you know it can go like that and then if you had it more in the orientation like you might have a, a portrait or something you do it like that so then that one's at the top if the head is in there Now sometimes these little metal pins and things here, you might just have to gently massage it past the point. Or in the case of this one, say over here, it's come a little bit too far unstuck, too far down, so just bend that back a little bit. Just make sure that's all in there, that's all good. Now it's just a quick matter of going through and flattening these down. Okay, so we've gone through now and flattened all those down. So now the big reveal, and we flip it over. And there we have it. And now that that's on there, you can just see there's a few little areas which have a bit of dust and fleck from this side. So we'll go through, give that a quick little wipe down. These were some illustrations I did on a live stream. So if you click around the video, you'll be able to see how it was created. And here is the other one. So now we've got a couple there. My son's just really into Iron Man at the moment. So I've done a couple of these and he just wanted them. So I figured, oh, well, just do some quick frames like this. Won't break the bank, but you know, give a lot of a punch in effect. And then he also did this Iron Man Lego mosaic for his birthday. So there'll be a link around the video where you can sort of see his review on that as well. If you'd like to commission a sketch or painting, please get in contact with me at matt at mattelder.com. If you found this video useful, give that thumbs up button a press. Always love getting those. If you want to be super awesome, then consider subscribing to the channel. If you'd like to see a quick overview and time lapse of how I created one of these pet portraits, click here. To see the live stream where these Iron Man pieces were created, click here. Alternatively, here are some other videos you might enjoy. Thanks for watching and that's it from us here at Family Bricks. Until next time when we talk about all things lifestyle.